Well, let's talk about this uh, Raw 30 show. So, in fact, it did open up with uh, Hulk Hogan coming out and just saying hi with a mic that didn't work. <laughs> kind of like a normal Semper Vivi appearance, quite frankly. Shut up, you jerk. You're in good, uh, I was going to say, you're in good uh, company, but you had to be mean about it. What then, are you talking about, you dork? Then we had the trial. Let's go have problems with Dave on the Observer Brother, Live Brother, you show. didn't even have your mic plugged in yesterday. So what? So, it's, so, so what? What? Things happen. So you're mad at me? You didn't even have your own mic plugged in. I'm upset with you for the fact you bring it up God. as a cheap shot on the air, you little bastard. Hey, that's not allowed. I'm Do sorry, it. Dom. I'm sorry you have to do all that massive editing for the Mightier 1090. Little prick. That's two. You can't mm -hmm. say that. Anything else? I'll get suspended right now. I don't care. We have the tribal court of Sami Zayn. I'm going to put you. I'm, I'm going to get a. I'm going to get a. I'm going to have a, 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 a trial for you, Semp. And you better hope. Actually, you should be happy. I'll have I'll have Paul uh, Paul Heyman be the prosecution because he oh. he was horrible. His he argument was. against Sami yeah. Zayn was the worst. Like he's he's mad at Sammy. He doesn't like him. And so he's got four clips that prove that it supposedly prove that Sammy is in cahoots with Kevin Owens. Not one single one of them was any good whatsoever. His, and then it concludes with, you know, he tried to cut a promo on Kevin and he accidentally bumped into Roman, which Paul Heyman claims is attempted murder. Well, do you remember the adultery that Hulk Hogan performed when he lifted Elizabeth up onto his shoulder and his hand happened to be in relation yes, to he, her gluteus maximus? He grabbed maximus? her buttocks. He didn't grab it. Hey, listen, him grabbing her buttocks was uh, was was far better evidence of, of an affair than anything that Paul Heyman presented here on this thing. It is true. So He's then, the son of a lawyer, not a lawyer himself. Roman's going to kick out Sammy. He's going to, and I just kick him out. He's going to, he's going to get thumbed. But who should make the save but Jay Uso? <laughs> Something so dirty about all Jay of that. Jay apparently knew this was going to happen. So he Asiatic put together, spike. he put together his own video and it's one, it's one after another of, of Sammy taking a bullet for the bloodline. He had more than Paul did. He, he, he well, they he were all to, better. Like, exhibit, like, like, no, I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was four and four. But regardless, he stands up for Sammy, and then Roman finally declares that Sammy is not guilty for now. But he needs to finish out the night, then then he needs to go home, and he does not want to see him until the Royal Rumble. And when that when that show eight. comes, mm. it'll be his final test. Well, it's a great segment. It was fabulous segment. It went on for a long time though, because here's the thing: by the time the show started. I don't know when this thing ended, but they didn't actually begin talking till 12 minutes into the show to actually begin this thing. So it was a uh, it'll be interesting to see how they did, because, again, no football. And I'm not sure what their competition was last night. Then we had the Usos versus Damian Priest and Dominic Mysterio. Jimmy goes for a dive, pretends like he's injured his leg. The ref actually holds up the dreaded X. And then, uh, of course, Pierce comes out and goes, you guys got to vacate the titles. Like, if he can't go, you got to vacate. I'm like, what? And then Sammy agrees, I will take his place. And Adam Pierce is fine with that. Well, that's part of this, his storyline now. That's the way that Adam Pierce governs is the fact, look at, at, at Judgment Day. Look, you, you the, it, the match is over unless he wants to get in. So that's just what Pierce does. That's his M.O. Well, this guy just went into business for himself. But then Sammy ends up helping hit the 1D. They win the match. They retain the titles. Crowd super to Sammy Zayn. In the back, Rain still ain't happy. And he says, Paul, he did the right thing tonight. But I don't want to see this guy till Saturday. Paul's face during that entire segment, especially when Sammy was talking as Paul was looking at Roman. Oh, extra slimy Paul last night. We had a bunch of segments backstage where dudes were playing poker, just a bunch of gags. All these people that were there and had nothing to do. They were just playing poker. That was catering. Then uh, L.A. Knight comes to the ring, and he wants Bray Wyatt. But instead... The Undertaker's music hits. First, his, his dong hits. Then the Kid Rock theme plays. And then the Undertaker comes out on his bike. His motorized bicycle. 
And he gets in the ring, and they're having to stare down, and, you know, L.A. Knight leaves. After noting, you know, Undertaker, when you did that Joe Rogan podcast, you're right, this locker room is soft. It's like, wow. <laughs> what a thing to tell the crowd that the Undertaker said on Joe Rogan. Well. So he goes to the back. Out comes uh, Bray Wyatt. You know, L.A. Knight scared. So he runs to the ring. He almost gets choked, slammed, but Undertaker shoves him into Bray. Bray lays him out. Man, you know, if you if you weren't excited for this match before, whew, now we've got a match between Bray and a guy who's a geek in a match that they're not even telling you the stipulation for. Uh, whatever. And then Undertaker whispered something into Bray Wyatt's ear. <laughs> Kid Rock's my theme music, man. So then we were supposed to have Becky and Bailey in a cage match. And the the Bellas, they were they were flown. I don't know where they were flown to, but they were flown out that way for this show. From Barmageddon. And then they, they were like, eh, we ain't going to this show. They went to a play. And then they went on their Instagram live and just buried <laughs> WWE for their treatment of the women. And they went on and on. And then today, like, everyone's up in arms because... We're going so, to a higher thespian honor, listen, and then we're going to play you out for the rest of the night. It was supposed to be Becky and Bailey in a cage match, okay? It was supposed to be Becky and Bailey in a cage match, and they'd been advertised. And listen, I ain't down for false advertising and everything like that. They didn't do the match. The match got cut because the opening segment and everything went way too long. And it's easier to cut time here than to try to have this go long and then try and cut time later, whatever. And people are real mad about it, okay? And listen, it, you know, if you really wanted to see the match, I'm not going to tell you you shouldn't be mad. And I'm not a big fan of, of false advertising, okay? But you know what? This what, is, Brian? This, things happen? Well, this is what was going to happen. Becky was going to face Bailey. In a cage match. She was going to beat Bailey, And then damage control was going to lay her out again. Okay? Instead, what they did is... They came out. They beat up Becky before the match began. They laid her out. They beat her up. The match never took place. Okay? I'm not even justifying it. Okay? But what I'm saying is... What they ended up doing, at the end of the day, at least we didn't beat Bailey. Their original plan was, we're going to beat Bailey in a cage match. Then the heels are going to beat up Becky again to probably lead to Becky and Bailey again after Bailey had been... You know what? That booking sucks. Yeah. So at least here, we took out the part about beating Bailey. And now you can do the cage match again next week on Raw or whenever. Give them all their time that they want. And then, you know, do whatever you're going to do afterwards. But I don't know. Was it that big a deal? They just like they got that whole segment cut. It's not like they sat in catering. They went out there and they shot the angle. But they didn't beat Bailey, Which to me is better than beating Bailey. And then doing the same angle to set up another match with Bailey. Am I wrong? You're not wrong. It should not be a big outrageous deal because we have the answer as to why it happened. It was not a false advertising bait and switch sort of deal. Yes, it was false advertising, but it's because the segment ran long and they didn't want to shortchange the cage match. But I also agree with you in the fact that, yeah, you actually served your purpose much better this way with it with the way that it worked itself out. So... You don't beat Bailey. It's not a big deal at the end of the day. Again, whoever timed the show out, all that sort of stuff. Okay, yeah, we 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 can bag on them. You know, if we can, you know, isolate who that person was. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal. And again, for all of you talking about short, yeah, you didn't get the cage match, but you're gonna get it. You're probably gonna get it Monday, and they're probably gonna get 20 minutes, and they're gonna do a full cage match. It's not like it's just disappearing into the ether. We're never going to see him wrestle again. We are. 
Man, if these people are some of the same people that are upset over the stardom match uh, being shortchanged, quote-unquote, on the New Japan Wrestle Kingdom show on January 4th, well, you've got a real issue with the clock this year. We had a long DX segment. Long, which led to Seth Rollins and the Street now Profits. This could have been cut short. Versus Gunther, Ludwig Kaiser, and Giovanni Vinci with Kurt Angle as the referee. And uh, Rollins ended up pinning Vinci with the curb stomp. And uh, and it was a good match. What do you expect? And all the legends put over Gunther. Nobody wanted to get near that guy. He's way too scary. We had a Charlotte Bianca segment where Ric Flair comes out. And where in God's name was he at Tacoma Discount World? Where did he get this suit? <laughs> and then he introduces Charlotte. And then Bianca comes out. They're interrupted by Sonya Deville. And, yeah, it would have been much better if they didn't do a match here, <laughs> if she would have just came out and got beat up. But instead, they actually did Bianca versus Sonya for an eight-minute match where Bianca beat her like it was nothing after eight minutes. And somehow this is supposed to make me want to see Sonya and Charlotte for the title? No. I do not want to see that match. I do not care. You know, you can get that suit by uh, just traveling to your local dispensary, and once you save up enough UPC codes, you can turn them back in for a chance at that thing. Then we add the uh, Miz, and, uh, you know, Miz came out once a moment, so Kevin Owens gives him a stunner, and then he promotes the match at the Royal Rumble. He did not vow, he did not promise to win the title. He promised to do his best. Which he will. Because, you know, Babyface ain't supposed to promise or swear to God or anything like that if they ain't going to win. So he very cleverly did not promise to win. We got a 30-man men's Royal Rumble, a 30-woman women's Royal Rumble, of which we have seven women right now. We have Roman Reigns, Kevin Owens for the title, Bianca versus Alexa for the title, and Bray versus L.A. Knight. Pitch black. Yeah, whatever that is. And then the main event, Austin Theory beat Lashley in no DQ match when Brock Lesnar came down and uh, he hit an F5 on Lashley. And then he hit an F5 on Theory onto Lashley and La and Lashley got pinned. So Austin Theory retains the title. And, uh, and that was the end of the show. First hour of the show was awesome. And then the show went like this. And there were a ton of of commercials in the second and third hour. So I expect the first hour of Raw to do well over 2 million viewers, and I think the last hour is going to do probably around 1.6 million or something like that, a gigantic, gigantic plunge. Might even do lower than that. <laughs> I really do. I think the average will probably be okay because of that first hour and all the star power that they have, you know, even rolling into the second hour. But that was a long show to get through. And I don't think the main event was going to be enough to hold anybody. You know, they didn't advertise Brock. So him popping back out, you know, maybe you get something for an overrun if it happened to go over, you know, with maybe that news getting out there. But. They seemed like they were rushing to go off the air, and they looked like they were almost out of time, so I doubt that happened. Why am I the bad guy here with this with this Bailey thing? What? Why am I the bad guy? Well, Why is this a double standard? Every situation is different. And in this situation, it's like it is the lesser of two evils. Why would you beat Bailey just to set up doing the match again? It's not the end of the world. It's one thing. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Poor Steffi. Every time she comes out, she gets... Poor Steffi, all right. Yeah. Any, anyway, she, her and her dad were in the in the ring, and he was oh, going to give gonna her... it's going to be quite a review a, tonight. He was going to give her a trophy for something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the good old days. And then uh, Shane tells his dad he wants to run Monday Night Raw. <laughs> this is insane. Meanwhile, right. there's gigantic news in the world of wrestling that we're not talking about because we got to talk about a Raw from 25 years ago. Yes, Granny? Can I stay long enough to hear what the news is? I know what it is. Well, we don't know what the news is officially, Granny, so just tune in tomorrow. No. <laughs> what a crummy show. Uh, wow! <laughs> what do you want me to do about it? What the... <laughs> if you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, 
the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.